How would you summarize an entire book using a language model? I asked myself the same question and I went on a mission to find out. Summarizing bodies of text is one of the prime use cases when working with language models. It's extremely valuable to be able to distill important pieces of information from long bodies of text. People summarize articles, financial documents, chat history, tables, pages, books, song lyrics, and way too many more to count. In this video, we're gonna go from novice to expert and review the five levels of summarization. Let's jump into it. All right, for the five levels of summarization, novice to expert, we're gonna summarize a couple sentences, a couple paragraphs, a couple pages, an entire book, and we're also gonna summarize an unknown amount of text. What does that mean? Uh, you're gonna have to wait till the end and see here. First thing we're gonna do is import our OpenAI API key. And for level one, we're just gonna do a basic prompt. So just summarize a couple of sentences here. I'm gonna import uh, OpenAI from Langchain. I'm gonna create my language model. And in this case, I'm simply just gonna copy and paste some text from Wikipedia, and I'm gonna put it inside of a prompt for level one here. Please provide a summary of the following text. This is my instructions that I want the language model to do, and the text that I'm giving it is a passage on philosophy from Wikipedia. So I'm gonna put that into a prompt variable, and let me get the number of tokens that this is. So this prompt has 121 tokens right now, and the reason why this is important is because as our token uh, number of tokens increases over time with the larger documents, we're gonna need to handle them differently here, but 121 is pretty small. So let's go ahead and run this output. All right, philosophy is a systematized study of general and fundamental equations about existence, reason, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's still a little too complicated for me. So I'm gonna adjust the instructions that I'm giving it to get a different type of summary or a different output for me. So please provide a summary of the following text. Please provide your output in a manner that a five-year-old would understand. Let me do the same thing, put that into a prompt variable. And so now we have a few more tokens, but it's still, it's really not that much. And let's see what the output is. Philosophy is about asking questions and trying to figure out the answers. That's a lot more digestible for me, nice. Let's move on to level two, prompt templates. So here we're gonna summarize a couple of paragraphs. Again, we're gonna import OpenAI, but this time we're gonna import a prompt template, which is a really easy way to swap out different pieces of a prompt that we send to a language model. Let's go ahead and load this. The two essays we're gonna look at are Paul Graham essays. And this is gonna be Get Ideas and Noob. So what I'm gonna do is create an empty list called essays. And for each one of those essays, I'm gonna put it inside that list. And let's print out a preview of the essays to see what they look like. So essay number one, uh, someone fed my essays into GPT to make something I could answer based on them, cool. And then essay number two, when I was young, I thought old people had everything figured out. Awesome. So now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a prompt template and we're gonna dynamically insert these essays into that prompt template. So here we have our template. Please write a one sentence summary of the following text. So notice here how I said one sentence instead of just write me a summary. Let's go ahead and run this. We put it in our prompt template and we have our essay token which corresponds right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through those two essays and I'm gonna get summaries for both of them. So for essay in essays, which is our list of essays that we had up above, we're gonna format the prompt. We're going to put the single essay right inside of here. And so our full prompt will be the template plus the essay. We're gonna get our number of tokens, which we're gonna look at. And then we're finally gonna get a summary and we're gonna put take that by using the summary prompt and throwing it in our language model. Let's go ahead and run this. So the first one had 205 tokens, not too bad. And the summary is just a one sentence summary. Exploring anomalies at the frontier front of knowledge is the best way to generate new ideas. Cool. Uh, this prompt has 500 tokens, and so the second one had 500 tokens. This essay explores the idea that feeling like a noob is actually beneficial. Nice, so we get a one sentence summary of both those essays, which is pretty cool. Level three, this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. We're gonna use a map reduce method. And this means that we're gonna chunk our document up into pieces, and we're gonna get a summary of each of the individual chunks, and then finally get a summary of the summaries. Okay, so let's import OpenAI. We're gonna import load summarize chain. And this is a really easy convention that Langchain provides in order to do this map reduce operation over um, a few documents. And our recursive character text splitter is what we're gonna split our text with. So here we have a Paul Graham essay, and this startup idea is one I know is actually pretty long. So let's load that and let's see how many tokens it is. It's 9,500 tokens. And so today, this would be too big for GPT 3.5 and even GPT 4. However, in the future, token limits are gonna increase. This likely won't be an issue, but it's good that you're learning how to do this in case you ever run into this problem. Okay, all right, so we have our docs, and then I wanna run this and see how many docs we have. So what we did is we just split our documents up here, and we ran it into the create documents from our text. We had, Now we have our number of docs and number of tokens on the first doc. So we now have five documents, 
and the first one has about 2,000 tokens. So we went from one document with 9,500 to five documents, roughly 2,000 tokens each. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna load our uh, summarize chain. And in this case, we're gonna pass in the language model that we're using, and we're gonna specify the chain type. And the chain type is gonna be the type of operation or the type of chain that gets deployed on this one. And in this case, we wanted to do the map reduce operation for us. So we loaded up that chain, and now I'm gonna uh, uh, run that chain and put it in an output variable. Great, now we have our output. Y Combinator explains that the best startup ideas come from looking for problems, preferably ones that the founders have themselves. That's cool, but, but this is kind of long for me. So I'm gonna actually create my own prompts and not use the default ones that Langchain uses. So here I'm gonna create my map prompt. And actually, in fact, I lied. This one is the same one that the Langchain uses by default. But then for the combined prompt, I'm gonna uh, specify the format that I want. Return your response in bullet points, which covers the key points of the text. So I want it to respond in bullet points for me, not just in regular prose. Let's run this. I'm gonna load up my summary chain. And the important parts here is I'm gonna pass what map prompt I want and what combined prompt I want. Let's run this and let's run the output on this one. Great, now we get a response and you can see here that we have bullet points uh, of a summary. Let's move on to level four. And this is when you wanna uh, summarize an entire book. And this is actually what started this journey of the different levels of summarization. The method that I've come up with, and I don't know if there's a better name for this, someone please tell me that there is because I just made this up. It's called the best representation vectors. Instead of doing a map reduce operation over an entire book, can we extract the important sections of that book and then do a summary on those sections? So it's kind of like, hey, can we pick the 10 best sections from this book and then do a summary on those without having to look at the rest of the text. And the method I used here involves embeddings and clustering. So let's dive in to see how this works. The first thing I'm gonna do is import my book here. So the book that I'm actually doing is gonna be uh, Into Thin Air, one of my favorites, and it's about the 1960, 1996 Everest disaster. I'm doing some hand wavy stuff here, but I only want the 26th page through the 277th page. And this is the contents of the book. It doesn't have the footnotes and it doesn't have the table of contents and things like that, just to make it a little bit easier. And then I'm, this is a PDF, so I'm gonna run through it and I'm actually gonna take the page content and put it into a regular text file for me. And finally, I'm gonna replace the tabs with some spaces because it was some weird formatting out of the PDF. PDF loader is not defined, great, so let's run this. Great, so now that we've loaded up our PDF and put it inside this text, let's see how many tokens this is. And wow, so what we get is almost 140,000 tokens. Even with GPT-32K, that would not, it would not be able to handle summarizing this entire book for us. So we're gonna have to come up with another method. Now, the part that I wanna avoid is I don't wanna send all 140,000 tokens to the language model itself because I calculated it and it would roughly be almost five bucks, four or five bucks, just for the prompt itself, not even for the output or the completion. So let's come up with a different method here. My goal is to chunk this book and then get embeddings for each of the chunks. I wanna pick a subset of the chunks which represent a holistic but diverse view of the book. So I want an encompassing set of chunks, but I want them a lot, I want them different from each other so that we get different parts about the book that may be the important parts. Or simply another way is, can we get the top 10 passages from the book that describe the book the best? We're gonna load up our book into the single text file, which we've already done. We're gonna split our text into kind of large chunks. We're gonna embed those chunks to get the vectors. And then the interesting part is we're gonna cluster the vectors to see which ones are similar to each other because I don't wanna do a, a map reduce operation on similar chunks because it's likely telling me the same thing. What I want is just one representative from a cluster and I want one representative from each cluster so I get a diverse set here. So I'm gonna pick the embeddings that represent the cluster the most. And my method to do this is to take the one that's closest to the cluster centroid, which is just the middle part of the cluster because I figure that's where um, the most average meaning of that cluster is gonna be. And then finally, we're gonna summarize the documents that in, that these embeddings re uh, represent, okay? Um, again, another way for put it in straight English is which 10 documents from this book represent most of the meaning? I wanna build a summary off those 10 documents. All right, so we're just gonna load in a bunch of stuff here, but we're gonna do the vector store dance. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna split our text and we're just put it in a bunch of docs here and let's see how many docs we actually have. So now we have 78 documents. And if you tried to do a regular MapReduce method on this, you could, but you'd have to go through all 78 of those documents and you don't wanna do that. You'll notice here that my chunk size is 10,000 characters and so it's on the larger side. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our embeddings and we're actually gonna get our vectors out the other end. 
Let's go ahead and do that. Cool, now that we have our vectors, I wanna cluster the vectors to see which groups pop out here. And I'm gonna specify, I want 11 clusters right here. You should specify what you want for your book. It's gonna take trial and error and see what works best for you. And my clustering method is I'm gonna use k-means. I actually went down a pretty complicated path to see which other clustering methods would work better for me. And this one actually worked out the best. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of data science experts out there who are way smarter than me, and they're gonna tell me that this isn't the right optimal path. Um, Great, it's working for me right now. No, but really, I would love if you would tell me um, which one would actually be more optimal here because I'd love to improve this method and share it out with the crew. So let's go ahead and run that. And already, we that was super quick, we just got our clusters there. And if we were to take a look at our labels, we can see here that this represents the 78 documents that we've had. And it says that document zero has a label of two. So it just has the cluster two. And it looks like the first couple have all label two, which is pretty interesting because I'd kind of expect that. I would expect that the beginning of the book would all be talking about the same thing. And as the plot develops a little bit more, you'd have different clusters that represent different pieces. So it's pretty cool because cluster eight here doesn't appear anywhere else because cluster eight is likely talking about the end of the book. I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, I couldn't help myself. I had to graph these clusters because what else are you supposed to do when you have clustering other than graph it, right? So what I had to do first though was do dimensionality reduction because each one of these vectors is about 1500 dimensions, but uh, I don't want to plot 1500 dimensions. I want it down to two. So in that case, what I did is I used uh, TSNE. It's just a um, dimensionality reduction type of algorithm. And then I ran it through matplotlib so we can actually see what these clusters look like. Now, the cool part is that I'm going to label the color of each cluster depend or the of each dot depending on what cluster it's with. Let's go ahead and run this. And sweet, what we get is a 2D representation of those clusters. So what's pretty cool to see is that the dimensionality reduction worked and we can see that there's groups of different clusters. It's so like these three yellow dots or all these blue dots together or these dark blue ones. And so this is 11 colors. I probably could have split the colors out a little bit more, but I thought this was pretty cool. This represents different sections of the book that we're now gonna go pick our best um, document from. Okay, so then we have uh, a nice little for loop right here that's gonna go through each uh, cluster that we have, and it's gonna pick the vector that's closest to the center of that centroid. So this is my way to figure out which document is gonna be closest to the centroid of each one of those clusters, because my hypothesis is that one will be the most representative of the whole thing. Let's go ahead and run this, and we get our uh, selected indices here. And I'm actually gonna sort them so that they appear in order, because with a book, you wanna make sure that you process your summaries in order. So I wanna process the first document that, because the first document is gonna be the one that appears first in the book, and and then go down the line. Now, the other interesting thing here is I noticed it starts off with document zero, which is the first document in the book, and this makes sense. This is the introduction. It's likely doing a lot of exposition and describing the plot. Then it jumps all the way to document number 12. So it determined that documents one, two, three, all the way up to 11 weren't that important in order to describe most of the book, and so we jumped to 12. But then down later down the line, it looks like there's a lot happening in the plot because we only skip three documents in this one. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a MapReduce method, but now instead of 78 documents, I just have 10 documents that I wanna do the MapReduce method on. Now, when I did this in the load summarize chain beforehand, I had kept on getting timeout errors. So I'm actually gonna do the MapReduce method by hand, which may be fun for everyone to see as well. Um, for the map part of it, I'm gonna use GPT 3.5 Turbo here, and this is to save on cost. Here's our map prompt. So I actually had to do a custom one here. You'll be given a single passage of a book. The section will be enclosed in triple backticks. Your goal is to give a summary of the section so that the reader will have a full understanding about what happened. Your response should be at least three paragraphs and fully encompass what was said in the passage. I added this last one because some of the summaries were a little short and there's a little bit more information loss than I wanted to do. And I said three paragraphs because for the combined method, we're actually gonna use GPT-4, which has the 8K token limit, and so we can stuff in a whole lot of information there, which is nice. There's our map prompt, and then I'm gonna uh, initialize my map chain. I'm gonna put in the 3.5, and here I'm gonna do a stuff, which means it's just gonna take that passage and put it right in the prompt, not do anything else that's fancy, and our prompt is we have our map prompt template up above. Let's go ahead and do that. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each one of our selected indices, which is the um, selected pieces up here. And then we're just gonna go get the dock that represents that, uh, that spot. So here we have our selected docs, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through each one of those selected docs. So we're gonna go through doc zero, then doc 12, then doc 26, and we're going to get um, the summary, uh, or the summary right here. 
and then we're gonna append that to our summary list, which is just gonna be an empty list. And then we're gonna print out a little status for us. So if we look at this first one right here, we can see that summary zero just got done. This is the first summary. And this happened to be chunk zero, which represents the first chunk that it thought was most important up above here. And so the preview of the summary that it generated was, the passage describes the author's experience of reaching the summit of Mount Everest on this date and the events that followed. The author, who is part of the New Zealand-based team, had been fantasizing about this moment for months, but found him, and I only did the first 250 characters, so it got cut off. Let's let the rest of these summaries load for us. Great, so we just got the summaries of each individual chunk here. So we went from chunk 0 to chunk 12, 26, 29, and if we take a look here, um, you know, on 51, this passage describes the harrowing experience of a group of climbers on Mount Everest during a severe storm, which is later on in the book, which is absolutely correct. So what we want to do here is with all those summaries that are going to be uh, put into our summary list, we want to, um, well, first of all, let's see how long that summary list is. Looks like it's about 4,000 characters. This is ideal for um, GPT-4 because it has a 8,000 character limit here. I'm going to set the max tokens at 3,000 because that means it's only a total of 7,000, which uh, shouldn't give me a problem here. So with this combined prompt, it's, it's not really a combined prompt anymore, but I'm just calling it that. Uh, you will be given a series of summaries from a book. The summary Summaries will be enclosed in triple backticks. Your goal is to give a verbose summary about what happened in the story. I say verbose because I don't want a ton of information loss. The reader should be able to grasp what happened in the book. There's the text in triple backticks, and then I'm asking for a verbose summary. Again, we're just using the stuff chain here because I'm taking all those summaries that we had before and I'm going to put them in the load summarize chain and just put them right in the prompt. And notice here that I'm doing uh, GPT-4 as well. So let's let this run. This will take a while on my machine, so I'm going to pause the video. Uh, awesome. Let's take a look at the result here. And now we have our book summary. So in this story, the author recounts the experience as part of the New Zealand-based team attempting to summit Mount Everest. Despite months of anticipation, the author finds himself unable to fully appreciate the extreme exhaustion, blah, blah, blah. Um, throughout the story, the author describes various events challenged by the climbers. Um, they go through, blah, 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 and the aftermath of the tragedy. This even talks about what happened afterwards. So. In terms of a book summary, this really isn't too bad, and I'm actually pretty happy with the results. I'd love for you to try this out on your own uh, your own books. Let me know what you think. For level five, we're gonna look at how you summarize an unknown amount of text, and we're actually gonna use agents for this one. And the word of caution I have to give is that the best practices for using agents is still being actively researched and developed. They're not as reliable as we may want. In this example, I'm gonna run through a very quick and brief research project that the agent needs to go and search Wikipedia for. Now, I'm gonna ask it a different question that requires two different searches. And the important part about this is that the agent needs to understand what it needs to go search for. As agents become more developed, you're gonna be able to throw more complicated and nuanced research projects at them. But until now, let's just walk through an easy example. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import our packages here. So initialize agent and tool are the important ones, as well as the Wikipedia API wrapper. Yeah. Let's initialize our Wikipedia API wrapper, and then we're gonna create our toolkit. And in this case, there's just gonna be one tool, and it's gonna be the Wikipedia Wikipedia tool, we're going to give it a name, we're going to tell it what function it needs to run, which is the wikipedia.run, and then we're saying it's useful for when you need, need to get information from Wikipedia about a single topic. Let's go ahead and run that, and then we're going to initialize our agent, call it agent executor, and we have our toolkit, we have our language model, we have our agent type, and then I'm doing verbose equals true so we can see what it's thinking. And then what we're going to do is ask it to go over multiple um, Wikipedia pages here. Can you please provide a quick summary of Napoleon Bonaparte? Then do a separate search and tell me what the commonalities are with Serena Williams. So Napoleon and Serena Williams. I'm not really sure about the commonalities, but uh, let's see what the language model comes up with for us. Great, so we run here, and the first action is going to be going to Wikipedia. It's going to input, uh, it's going to input Napoleon. It's going to look at the Napoleon page, and then we're going to look at the Napoleon third page. Then we're going to look at House of Bonaparte, and then we're going to say, okay, it knows about Napoleon now. Now I need now I know the summary of Napoleon, I need to find information about Serena Williams to identify the commonalities between them. Now it's going to move over to Serena Williams, and then it's going to look at more information on the Williams sisters. It's going to even look at Venus Williams, and it's going to say, I know the final answer. So Na Napoleon and Serena Williams both have achieved remarkable success in their respective fields, with Napoleon being one of the greatest military commanders in history and Serena being one of the greatest tenor players of all time. They both dominated their fields at their peak and have left lasting legacies. So interesting. Uh, so it's kind of a lame commonality, but I'll take it. Absolutely. Awesome. And congratulations. That is the five levels of summarizing from novice to expert. Please let me know what you think on Twitter. And I'd love to see what types of things you're summarizing. So please share with the community.